Hello, so today I wanted to talk about kind of the five pillars of uh, mental performance. And I wanted to talk about this because I think um, it's, it's a growing field, obviously, the mental side to performance. And I think though sometimes, and I've seen this with a lot of my clients, we get caught up in one singular component of mental performance, not realizing that there's actually quite a, a broad scope to the mental performance side of the equation. And we really have to look at all these different components if we really wanna elevate ourselves and really achieve a high level of performance using the mental side of the equation. So this one part that usually most people think of when they think of mental performance is the mental skill sets. And mental skills are things like visualization, self-talk, routines, goal setting. Those are components that fall within mental skills and that are obviously exceptionally important, but they are not the full picture. So if all you do is mental skills, you've kind of got one of five pillars, okay? And if you really want to elevate your mental game, you have to understand you got to go beyond just those five pillars. And I see this with my high school athletes. I see this with professional athletes. They think they've got their mental game down because they have their routine down. They've set some goals. They feel like they've got good self-talk um, and that's it. And obviously, as you all know, watch Watching this self-talk especially can always be worked on so we need to always be also looking at what within those mental skills how can we elevate our skill sets to be better so that we can also be better another component though within the scope of mental performance is just self-development and this is the practice of getting to know yourself gaining self-awareness purposely trying to get to know yourself and that is really really key because that flows into pretty much all the other components under mental performance. The more you know yourself, the better you're going to be with the mental skills and these other things I'm going to look at. You really need to understand yourself and that's ever evolving. We are always constantly changing. So we're, there's always a need to continue to learn more about ourselves and to ask questions and to evolve that part of ourselves. That really is a never ending journey. And so we have to find ways to get to know ourselves better, whether that's through meditation, through books, through formal self-reflection, um, through doing some inner work with somebody, through just understanding who we are, how we react, um, how the stories we tend to tell ourselves. These are all things that we need to, to look at to really just help us as a person and as an athlete. Then we also look at just mental framework. Obviously, we all carry a certain kind of framework within us based off of our past, based off of our history, based off of who we are, based off of the stories we tell ourselves, kind of the lens through which we look at the world. And so it kind of goes with that other pillar of self-development, but we have to understand what is that framework for ourselves and how does it maybe need to be adjusted? How can we adjust it? And um, what do we need to do to maybe rethink some things about how we see things and how we see the world, um, how we see ourselves and how we see our performance and, and what we need to maybe do to be able to up our performance. We need to be able to rethink things, to ask ourselves some difficult questions at times and to not get too complacent. And so that is definitely also another part of the, you know, just equation of mental performance. And then we have recovery. And I think that's one of the things that people, you know, obviously on the physical side understand um, to a degree, but there's also mental recovery. And obviously the physical side is a part of that. When we do help to, you know, relax the body, help our body to recover, it also does help with our mind. But a lot of time we can do all of those physical things, but our mind is still running all over the place. We, we're not really shutting it off. We're not giving it some rest. Um, people don't understand that obviously our cell phones and technology, social media, they don't really help our minds to rest. There's actually studies now out there about social media and actually showing how it slows swimmers down, athletes down, especially in those longer events. And, and we have to understand that social media technology it actually does create mental fatigue and so if you're sitting there and you're icing yourself or you're doing some rolling or you're just kind of hanging out but you're scrolling through social media yeah physically maybe you are resting but mentally you are not resting and so therefore you're not fully recovering to now be able to go at it tomorrow with being able to have the best mental focus the best ability to be who you need to be in that moment 
And then finally, one of the other pillars is mindfulness. And mindfulness obviously is a thread that runs through all of them. That ability to be aware, to purposely being present, uh, accepting things as they are non-judgmentally. And that is obviously very important. And it's a skill set. That ability to be present is so huge. It is a big part of helping us to probably also recover because a lot of time that mental strain on ourselves is because we're thinking about the past or worrying about the future being present and kind of doing things like mindfulness practice meditations help us to become more of that observer of ourselves of our thoughts of the things that we are doing which helps us to get to know ourselves better helps us to get to know how we're seeing the world and what things maybe we need to to rethink and obviously help us to do our mental skills better so these are all components within mental performance and we have to understand that if you really want to get to that next level you need to go beyond just mental skills (laughs) 